Orange and Blue today is back tonight with a second report on everyone else because we talked about Cortland Sutton. Now it's time to talk about the quarterback situation. And to no surprise, at least it shouldn't have been a surprise, Jarrett Stidham was the first quarterback out there with the first team today. Yeah, I'm curious to see who's the first quarterback out on Wednesday when we get back out there. I'm sure we'll probably do a show on that, the way these things work. But Stidham, it was the first time we saw him running the number one offense so far. And what we saw from him with the twos in previous practices that we've observed, it translated. He looked smooth. He looked composed. He looked comfortable. I think that's a, a thing as well. Now, do I question how that's going to translate from remotes to the real thing in Star Wars parlance? Yes, because sure. we saw against the real thing of a pass rush, especially against the Raiders in Week 18, he looked skittish. He looked a little bit out of control. But what we've seen out there today, against a good pass rush, because Nick Benito had himself a day today as well. Yeah, it was a good day. Yeah, there were, you know, you, you had Benito getting pressure. You saw Stidham climbing the pocket and avoiding it to be able to have a chance to make a play. That was a positive thing to see out there as well. Yes, and on a day where the defense won, I think we can safely say that. Like, the yeah. defense won today in multiple ways. Stidham looked comfortable. Mace, I'm going to use another C word. I think you looked confident. Ooh. And that is something, look at you. It's uh, it's like, okay, like in the regular season, it was not good. Under pressure, it was not good. But if you're confident mm -hmm. and comfortable, it's going to look good. If you're confident and comfortable and composed. Three Cs. Yes. It's like talking about diamonds, right? <laughs> Maybe you're going to make a diamond of a quarterback unexpectedly. Who knows? I like it. I like it. Um, Maybe. I Again, I still, I, I got to see the real thing and I, sure, and, sure. Yeah. And I, and is the stealing, is the ceiling for Stidham limited? Yeah, I'd say so. But I can say from what we've witnessed the last few weeks that when Sean Payton says to you and me at the league meetings in Orlando, when, when we ask him about Jarrett Stidham, that the vision didn't change based on those first two starts that he had at the end of the 20, 2023 season. I can kind of see a little of what he's talking about. Mm -hmm. And it's why, like it or not, you may see Stiddy starting week one, even with right. that limited ceiling. Now, that, that being said, Bo Nix working with the threes today. There are things Bo Nix can do that Jarrett Stidham cannot. And these are things that impact the long-term ceiling. Bo, like the thing that Nix does, that tool that he has on his belt that Jarrett Stidham doesn't have is more of the improv. Now, Nix can operate well in the pocket. And we see, by the way, He's changing. He's making changes to the line of scrimmage. He's IDing coverages and all that. Love he's, it. Oper he's operating at an advanced level, as we've talked about on previous shows. The thing that Bo has that Jarrett Stidham does not is when there is a breakdown, the ability to recover. And that's where you look at Jarrett Stidham in week 18. And that's where it kind of works against him. Whereas we see Nick's operate under duress. We see him move up. We see him move around. We see him sidearm it. It thrives. Yeah, there's a bit more improv in his game than Jarrett Stidham has shown to be capable of to this point in his career. And that's the thing that I think will eventually push Bo Nix and mean he has that he's better than Jarrett Stidham. Maybe not today, yeah. but I think that's going to manifest itself in time. Well, and Nix is a better runner. We can't say everything we saw, in a, uh, Mace, but if you were to design a run for Jarrett Stidham, it would not be as impactful as a designed run. I'm just hypothetical for Bo Nix. It would involve misdirection a la Peyton Manning and his famous <laughs> touchdown run in Dallas. In Dallas, yeah. 
yeah. where I'm not sure I would describe that as a run <laughs> as a much saunter. the saunter and amble perhaps, by the way, if you want to look up something wild, watch some Peyton Manning college footage. Cause he actually could run then. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He could move. And there yeah. are some scrambles at Tennessee that are just from what we knew Peyton Manning to have in the future, seeing it back then, like, Whoa, he had this club in his bag. Yeah, he had the club in his bag in 1996. He didn't have the club in his bag by 2001, <laughs> no. let alone 2012 or 2015. Right. right. No, but it's there. But it's- he found other clubs, and that's mm-hmm. what allowed him to succeed because as one went away, another improved. And that's the sort of thing you're counting on with Bo Nix if you're playing the long game with him yes. is that – in three or four years, he's relying less on his legs and more on being able to diagnose and process even more quickly than he can right now, which, again, compared to what we've seen from other rookie quarterbacks, Bo Nix is well ahead of the guys that we've seen in the last two decades, Jay Cutler, Tim Tebow, Paxton Lynch, Drew Locke, at similar points. Yeah, well ahead. And I want to emphasize super quick before we get on to Peyton's comments about Sudam. Mike Evans, we released a short on our YouTube channel of Evans saying it's a disaster if Nix doesn't start week one. No, it's not. No, it's not. No, it's not. It's not at all. Not at all. No. No, no. Especially with the way that Jared Stidham is looking. Now, here's what Coach Peyton had to say about Jared Stidham. He's doing well. I mean, clearly within the framework of what we're doing, he's much further along than, you know, in year one and uh, in the transition. Um, I'd say he's, he's looked real sharp uh, during this, during this off season program, um, real decisive. And, uh, you know, I think the leadership, you know, he's able to provide there and, and, th- and there's good competition. There's a word there. I want to know if it's the same for you as it is for me. Okay. Let's say it on three, one, Two, three, decisive leadership. <laughs> I'd like the competition word. I like the decisiveness word. I like the leadership word. And when okay. we were at the owners' meetings, and Sean Payton, when we asked him, like, "Hey, when do you know enough is enough?" enough and he was like, "We're not there yet." Yeah, that's Deci- why decisive. Now, leadership comes into play in another soundbite that we're going to share with you on this show decisive matters because this I think is a function of year two in the offense because Mm -hmm. what I saw in week 18, particularly in Las Vegas under pressure was indecision and that worked against him. It looks better out there now. Now that being said, the Broncos pass rush doesn't have Max Crosby. So the challenge is slightly different, but also that Broncos pass protection back in week 18 didn't have Mike McGlinchey's out there right now. And it looked, so it, you might say that one hand washes the other in that regard. And I thought he, I, I, I think decisive is a very apt word to describe what we're seeing from Jarrett Stidham out there. And that's really encouraging because that shows growth compared to what he's had earlier in his career. Very much so. And the leadership that was already natural, we've talked about his charisma in the locker room with this team. Mm -hmm. And that's just going to make Bo Nix better. All roads lead to Bo Nix. They will. But Jarrett Stidham looking like this makes Bo Nix better because he's got to work for it. Yeah, he's got to work for it. And also – to go back to the word that you focused on leadership as a leader, you have to be true to yourself and your personality, but there are things that Bo Nix can learn watching Jared Stidham in that locker room. Things that we saw when we were in the locker room last year, Stidham very gregarious, but very, but you know, not in a phony way. It's very honest and sincere interested in guys in the locker room. I mean, interested in in what's going on in their lives Mm -hmm. really does well at getting, you know, people all, you know, from different backgrounds. I mean, 
you know, the locker room is a, you know, kind of a pastiche of, of people from a lot of different places, different experiences. And Jared Stidham knows that there's something he can, that he can gain uh, and, and connect with from, from all those areas. I mean, I, I think one of the coolest things last year, I thought, was how sometimes Jerry Judy would be struggling and it would be Jared Stidham who would kind of bring him out a little bit and talk yep. with him. The lockers right across from each other. Yeah. And they had a, they had a really cool relationship. And I think that probably prevented things from uh, being even more sideways for Jerry Judy last year mm -hmm. was having Jared Stidham around. Yep. That steady force, uh, yeah. someone that believes in you and a, f a friend as corny yeah. as that may sound like you got a friend in me. See, I was thinking of uh, Golden Girls theme. <laughs> what someone would say to Jerrison, thank you for being a friend. Travel down the road and back again. By the way, the full song of that by uh, Andrew Gold, it gets dark. Like there's a <laughs> lyric. And when we die and float away. <laughs> I kid you not. There's, there's a full song beyond what you hear. to okay. the, the opening of the Golden Girls. Oh, all right. There you go. Um, anyway, you want to play Peyton on the locker room impact of making yeah, the quarterback decision or minors on Knicks? Let's start with Peyton on the locker room impact because I think you and I have gotten some grief for this, and I know I've gotten some grief on social media by pointing out that you can't simply give the job to a rookie unless he's earned it, that there were pitfalls to, for example, giving Isaiah McKenzie the punt return job sight unseen, giving Montrell Washington the punt return job sight unseen. And those were rookies at positions that don't have the prominence of quarterback. Every guy in the locker room is going to know when the time is right for Jared Stidham. It's going to be, or for Bo Nix, it's going to be obvious. But if Jared Stidham is the better quarterback in camp and the team knows that and Bo Nix gets the job, it may not go over well in the short term because you do have these ideals about a locker room and a football team being a meritocracy. And if Stidham is the better quarterback, not playing him would go against that, which is what you have to consider when you're talking about the locker room. I still think, you know, we always talk about the locker room and – and the players in the locker room. And so I think when we get into training camp and we get into the preseason games, I think oftentimes the decisions take care of themselves, but uh, the object is to win. And, uh, and I understand the question relative to, but in our league, it's year to year, you know? And, and so, man, we're competing to win this year. And, uh, and we're going to make the right decision relative to who gives us that opportunity. Um, and I think the, uh, not only a quarterback, the thing I see different in, in this off season is in the secondary in at the receiver group at the line. There, there's a lot of competition for, for jobs and playing time. And that's encouraging. And, and I think you guys who followed and watched these a year ago, Maybe you see something that's different. Uh, certainly, I feel like um, it's been different. Different energy out there, Mace. There definitely is. And it, there's a dynamic energy. There's a competitive energy to it. And it means they're going to have some tough decisions, but also it means that there may be some decisions that today we don't necessarily expect. But that's okay. If you create an environment in which the best player ends up getting the job, that, I think, long-term prevents you from having some problems. If you have an environment where the best player doesn't get the job, someone else does, it's going to undermine the locker room. It's going to make players frustrated. One of the ways, sure. that, you, one of the ways that you keep everybody engaged and involved – is by being consistent, not in words, but in actions of saying the best player is going to earn the job. 
if you're a young player on the practice squad, it's one of those things that keeps you going, right? That, mm-hmm. okay, if I work hard and improve, I can do that. Okay. Jaleel, and, and we've got evidence of that at positions. Jaleel McLaughlin. Hey, Jaleel McLaughlin, today, the best running back on the field. Jaleel McLaughlin. A lot of first team reps. Jaleel McLaughlin, the three previous practices we've seen out there, the best running back on the field. Now, obviously, the big test is going to come when the pads go on and there's pass protection involved. Mm-hmm. But Jaleel is passing some tests right now. And he goes from being undrafted, off the radar, making the roster, playing throughout the season. That's a, He earned his job. Um, you remember last year, and, and here's an example of it working the other way. A lot of people thought Marquez Callaway is going to make the team because Sean Payton guy came from New Orleans, yep. yada, yada. Yep. He didn't. At one point, Sean Payton talked about how Callaway had to step it up. He mm-hmm. didn't do it. If he had made the team just because the coach is familiar with him, that would have gone over like a fart in church. And to his credit and the entire coaching staff credit, they didn't, they didn't fall victim to that. They didn't go, they didn't lean on the familiar. They instead said, okay, like the, what we saw on the field dictated something different. Yep. And that's uh, engaging and kind of in, uh, creates enthusiasm within the players because then it's not, oh, the Saints guys. Of course, the Saints guys are making the team. Yeah. No, you got a chance. You perform well. You've got a chance. Doesn't care if you just showed up. There's a couple guys on that roster today that weren't on the roster. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, who is that? Anyway, let's get to minors on Knicks because this is the quote. Honestly, we could have done the entire show on this. Um, unfortunately, we've got other commitments that we have to get to. Both Mason and I are doing a lot this week to bring yeah. you the great information. We appreciate you all. Like and comment on this video. But this Miners clip, let's just play it and react to it because I think it's flipping awesome. I think his his like sense of maturity, you know, you can tell he's a, you know, if it almost feels like in a sense that he's kind of been here before, I guess, something like that. Um yeah, it's been it's been really fun to get to know Bo. You know, it's always, you know, as I'm you know becoming an older guy, it's it's fun to get to know the rookies a little bit more. Sense of maturity, like he's been there before. When I watch Bo Nix pre-snap, I don't feel like I'm watching a rookie quarterback. Not at all. It's changing place. When I watch him in the huddle, same thing. There was actually one moment today that I noticed where, like, he kind of he gets in the huddle. He, I think he puts his, you know, puts his hand on the helmet of one of his teammates, you know, brings everybody in. Like it's, yeah, there's, there's a confidence there. There's a presence there. Again, it belies what you expect from a rookie kind of coming in all wide eyed and looking around and all that. Mm -hmm. And it's really exciting to see if he doesn't earn the job. I think it's more because Jarrett Stidham showed something that we hadn't seen before. I mean, mm-hmm. we're talking, you know, we've, we've seen four practices and what's been consistent that Jarrett Stidham's look pretty good. in all of them, he's steady, no matter who Ste- he's throwing st- to steady, steady. Yep. And my point on maturity with Nick's as we wrap up today's or tonight's program, Mace mm-hmm. is that he his best chemistry, his favorite guy, it's the open guy. Yes. You would think he would lean on Troy Franklin like, oh, that's of course he's going to his guy. Actually, he looks better throwing to Devon Vele than almost anybody, but he prefers Mims. He prefers Lucas Kroll. He prefers Devon Vele. He prefers mm-hmm. Tim Patrick. Tim Patrick, big day today. Yes. Like Bo Nix's maturity comes through because his favorite guy is the open guy. Exactly. So – yeah, he's got the chemistry with Troy Franklin, but he's thrown to the open spot. He's thrown the open man. Devon Vele is yep. open. He's getting the ball. Tim Patrick's open. He's yep. getting the ball. And that, when he ends up being the starter, and yeah, all, Jarrett Stidham's playing well, and he might be the week one starter, but all roads eventually lead to Bo Nix. 
Yeah, there you go. Yes. Do you like Phil Collins? <laughs> uh, All roads eventually lead to Bo Nix, but um, you know, Jared Sidham could be the guy initially. But when Bo Nix goes out there, I think he's gonna have no problem making sure that everybody's involved. I don't think you're gonna have receivers over the long haul saying and he's saying, why am I not getting the ball? Mm-hmm. It, the open player is going to get the ball. And that means it's going to change based on coverage. It's going to change yep. week to week. Yep. You may be looking at something where, okay, this game, Javante Williams has eight receptions. The next game, Lucas Kroll has six catches. The next game, it's a Marvin Mims Jr. short of force. Might, might change from week to week. You know what happens when you do that? You become really stinking hard to defend. Yep, because you as a coach can control it because yeah. you have another coach on the field. His name's Bo Nix. Mace, we got to run for this one. Um, but OBT1, OBT2, hell, we could have done an OBT3 today, but we're here for you all week. Maybe Thursday our schedule will be open a little bit more than we thought. We'll see. But either way, we'll see. How can they help us out on YouTube, brother? Like, comment, share, subscribe, and hit that notification bell. So that you never, never miss a vid. vid. That's right. He's Andrew Mason. Follow him on all the socials at Mace Denver. I'm Cecil Lammy saying OBT's BFD. Thanks for watching. Stay tuned and stay frosty.